Today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about washing your clothes while you're out traveling. There are essentially three ways that we can do this. First one is going to be that we do our, ourselves here in the room where we're staying. Second option is going to be more of a clean and uh, fold service that we can use. It's a little bit more expensive. And then thirdly, there is going to be the laundromat. So let's start out with the most reasonable way to do it, I would say. And that is going to be to wash the clothes ourselves. So I'm going to show you how to do all of this as well. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I usually choose to wash the clothes myself. You have a lot more control when you do it yourself. First of all, you can decide exactly when you want to wash the clothes. Secondly, I would say that it is more gentle because you can hand wash it as opposed to a machine which is a little bit more rough on your clothes. Also, you don't know if somebody else does it. How are they going to treat the clothes, you know? Thirdly, I would also say that it is quite fast, especially if you want to do this in smaller batches. Like today, we're just going to do a couple of days worth of clothes here in the sink. Now, there are some other ways we can do it as well when we're out traveling uh, by ourselves. Excuse me, can I help you with anything here? But we're going to focus on the sink here first of all. Obviously the drawback of doing it ourselves in a sink is going to be that we actually need to spend our own time to do it in the sink. Also it does take up space because you need to dry these clothes as well once we're done washing them here. And last of all you're going to need some type of cleaning product. Now you can usually get away with just using some soap that you have in your hotel or wherever you're staying. Otherwise, bringing a little bit of laundry detergent can be nice. I would go ahead and bring something like uh, liquid detergent. It has a tendency to spill. Also, the same goes with pods and powder. It just has a tendency to uh, leak, especially over time if you're going to travel and move around a bit. What I have gone over to using now is uh, sheets, laundry detergent sheets. And these are a lot more compact and it doesn't take up space or any weight at all. If you don't have them on hand and you're out traveling now, I would just go with soap. I have done that a lot in the past. It's not as good for the clothes as uh, using proper detergent, but if you're in a pinch, right, you got to do what you have to do. So like I alluded to earlier, there are a few different places we can do this. The easiest and most convenient way is probably going to be to do this in the sink. Other options may be to wash the clothes in the shower wearing them or just scrubbing them with the water running in all seriousness uh, that actually works just soap not detergent more realistically add some soap and just agitate it against the water in the shower once you're done rinse it out switch out the water and hang it up to dry a uh, third option is going to be to use a dry bag or something like a commercial product like those uh, scrubber bags i did a review on that back in the past if you want to check that out uh, i'm gonna link it but i figure we just start here with the clothes uh, in the sink it's going to be the most convenient so the first thing of all we want to do is separate the clothes we want to separate the whites out from the rest of the garments now washing synthetics cotton wool it's going to be fine generally because you're going to hand wash it all so just separate the colored uh, from the white garments so that you don't get color bleeding from your darker garments over to your bright garments so the next step here is that you want to look through the clothes if you have anything in the pockets for example uh, that's going to be a problem because that's going to dissolve or it's going to cause damage to the other clothes or the garment itself beyond that if you have any specific stains or holes in the garment you want to fix that now. So for holes, you may want to sew them together before you start agitating them and you know ripping them more apart. As for uh, stains, what you can do is pre-treat the stains. So if you have a specific stain on a garment, what you may want to do here is just add a little bit of water to it. And you can just take a little bit of your soap or detergent or whatever you're using and you rub it specifically on that area. And that way you can let it sit there for let's say five minutes. Once you're done looking through everything and making sure everything is all right, the next thing we want to do is turn on some water here. Now, since we're hand washing, I would probably go with pretty cold water. A little bit lukewarm is okay as well, but be a little bit careful with that, especially with synthetics. Now I'm gonna add that loaner detergent sheet into here. It's just gonna dissolve on its own here. At this point, you can add a little bit of soap as well if you don't have detergent on hand. Whether you're using soap or detergent, you want to sure, make sure everything is dissolved and uh, mixed together before you start adding the clothes in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss all the, the colored clothes in here now. I need to do another round with whites afterwards and do them on their own. All right, so now that we added uh, sufficient water here, I'm just going to turn off the water for a while. And what we want to do now is make sure all the clothes are submerged in the solution of detergent and water here. And if you want to, you can leave them soaking here for between five minutes and half an hour. 
I usually don't bother with that. I just go straight for the agitation here. So how you agitate the clothes, I like to just wring them around like this. If you have specific areas with stains, you want to find the area with a stain and kind of rub it against each other like this. Do it in the water as well. As you can see here, there is a lot of um, dye that is bleeding into the water. So if I were to add this white t-shirt over here now into this, this water would bleed over into the t-shirt and it wouldn't be as white as you would want it to, right? Quick tip pair, I usually just go with black or dark clothes when I'm traveling. I found that they're a lot easier to clean, especially with stains and all of this. You don't really need to pre-soak it so much. I'm just gonna finish up agitating this. Uh, usually just a couple of minutes like this. It's all you really need. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes now. The clothes here are very nice and clean now, but as you can imagine, they're full of soap, right? So what we need to do is to let out all the soapy water here. And from here, we're gonna rinse off the clothes again with some cold water. Usually I just take one garment at a time, wash it good. Once I'm done cleaning out any remainder of soap, I just kind of squeeze them to get out as much water as possible. That way we can make it a lot quicker to dry them afterwards here. All right, so the clothes are now nice and clean, but as you can imagine, they're still super wet, right? As you saw, I kind of squeezed out as much water as I could from clothes. You don't want to go overboard and start wringing it or anything, but just squeeze it out gently. That's going to help. Uh, remove a lot of the moisture. Another hack you can do is put the clothes on a towel like I've done here. I did a full video on that back in the day somewhere. I'm gonna link that as well. And you pretty much just roll up the towel like this. And if you keep pressing down on the, this towel for a couple of minutes, like a minute, probably plenty, what's gonna happen is that the moisture from the clothes is going to be transferred over to the towel so that you get a, a damp towel, but you do get pretty clean clothes. You can probably get them 80% of the way there using this method. So this is fantastic, especially if you're in a pinch, right? Super effective. However, I try to not dirty my towels, especially if I'm at the hotel and I only have one or two, right? So the alternative to this is going to be to hang the clothes to dry. And this is what takes up so much room when you're out traveling and you need to dry your clothes. What you usually can do is place the garment somewhere with heat or circulation. So outside is going to be fantastic. So this is my setup of choice today, out on the balcony. Um, yeah, not perfect, but it does do the job fine. Just be careful with the air conditioning units. It blows a lot of uh, hot wind, which is awesome. But if you have a balcony that is open, it also has a tendency to um, blow out over the balcony. So be very careful with that. Uh, better to use a chair. Also, color clothes go inside out when you're drying them in the sun. Just keep that in mind, otherwise they will start to bleach over time. I've also found that the bathroom is pretty nice because usually it is a little bit hotter in there. Also they have ventilation right out of the bathroom. All right, so you can see there are lots of good uh, hanging space here and we have the ventilation going as well. And uh, here's a little hack you probably didn't see coming. It's a good one. Also, if you have socks, I guess. Uh, you can hang stuff up here as well. Just be careful with the edges, can be sharp. Also, uh, if somebody closes the door, that's obviously horrible for your clothes. But yeah, um, creativity only stops uh, when you want it to. What about the toilet though? <laughs> Hanging them in front of the air conditioner is also really effective. I would say not as effective since the air conditioner blows cold wind instead of uh, hot, which helps uh, evaporate all the moisture. But it's for sure more effective to hang it in front of the air conditioner than nowhere at all. <laughs> so yeah, if you can like put chairs and hang the clothes over them, that's going to be quite effective as well. Beyond that, there is always uh, out the window or out on the balcony, be a little bit careful with the wind and stuff so that the clothes don't blow away. I've had problems with that in the past, just so that you're aware of that this can happen. Now, before we move on to the other two ways that you can wash your clothes, uh, I wanted to give you a quick tip here if your shoes are smelly. You know, you're traveling, you're out walking all day, right? So it's gonna start smelling at some point. Usually when you're out traveling, you also have some hand sanitizer or something on hand. Just any alcohol that is I don't know, 40% plus, it's gonna do fine. So the thing is that alcohol actually kills bacteria and bacteria is what is causing the smell on your shoes. So actually just adding a little bit of this uh, hand sanitizer or vodka to the soles of your shoes is gonna do wonders. Of course, you can always add it to the inside of the shoes as well if the shoes are super smelly. Would avoid doing this on leather. With most other types of shoes, I've found that it, this works excellently. That's gonna take out almost all the smell. Right, so we've covered the first way, which is going to be to hand wash your clothes yourself. 
The next option, which is going to be quite a step up, especially in price, is going to be to use a wash and fold service. Now this can be really nice, especially if you're on vacation and you just want to relax. You don't want to spend your days in the sink washing clothes or in the shower with washing your clothes. <laughs> so wash and fold service essentially is what it sounds like. You deliver the clothes to a place or they're picked up. They wash the clothes for you, they clean them, fold them and deliver them back to you ready for use. Now this has some advantages as you can imagine it is very very good on your time right you don't need to spend your own time on it you just pay and somebody else does it for you get them back nicely folded neatly and probably the biggest advantage is that you don't have clothes hanging all over your hotel room or accommodation wherever you're staying uh, to drip dry. Now, there are of course a bunch of disadvantages to using a wash and fold service as well. Besides the costs, you're not in control of what's happening with the clothes once you have handed them off, right? Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of little tricks that can help reduce uh, the chance of failure, <laughs> to put it like that. Usually, if it's a professional service that you're using, they will take good care of the clothes, but there have been circumstances, especially for me when I've been handing them over delicates like wool or, uh, sometimes even uh, cotton that either the wool has shrunk or been damaged sometimes the cotton hasn't been washed strongly enough so that uh, I wear it for a couple of hours and I still smell like uh, pits stains sweat uh, so it has not been washed strongly enough or even worse if your clothes have been stolen or displaced and you don't get them back besides that it's a pretty cool thing to have available there is the issue with that for example if you're traveling somewhere and you need to close by a certain time. Sometimes these cleaning services won't get them done in time. It usually takes 24 hours or so unless you pay extra. That's going to vary, of course. Now, you can find these cleaning services usually at a hotel, especially nicer hotels very often have this service. Besides that, there are a lot of laundry apps that you can use that will actually pick up the clothes, do it for you and give them back to you ready. However, it's like, do you want to do that when you're abroad? <laughs> I don't know, you have to judge yourself. Of course, laundromats often have this service as well. So if you can bring it, your clothes into a laundromat or an actual cleaning and folding service yourself, that could be nice as well. Then you kind of gain back some of the control as well, since you can talk to the people that actually work there, which is awesome for some of these tips I'm gonna give you now to kind of negate these issues that may appear. Well, first of all, I would check for the price, how much this costs. Sometimes you will find, especially hotels and such, they charge by the garment. For example, you have to pay $3 for shorts, for example. It, if you are able to find a place that charges by the kilo, that's going to be cheaper generally, I have found. You can often find it at wash and uh, fold places. Some hotels have it as well. It's gonna vary a lot where you are. Also prices are gonna vary greatly. Like now I'm in Asia, which is generally pretty cheap to have your clothes cleaned here. However, back in Europe or uh, North America, I imagine uh, it's quite a bit more costly to have other people do the laundry for you. So that's something you need to weigh up yourself. Anyway, let's get started here. You want to find a bag or something that you can put the garments into here. If you're at the hotel, usually there is like a specific garment bag or a, a little a basket that you can put the clothes into yourself. So if that's available, that's great. However, here it is not. So uh, we'll have to make do with this old uh, plastic bag that I brought from Norway. Anyway, the next thing we want to do here is always check the pockets before you hand anything over to professionals. Now, usually these professionals will take good care of the garments, but in some circumstances, if they're not as professional, you may want to give them a little bit of a helping hand. So yeah, check for anything in the pockets. Also, if there is any garments that has like a specific stain on it that you want to kind of address to the, the cleaning service, I would put that garment on top of the pile. Again, we want to kind of separate the garments here. I usually place the wool on its own and then synthetics and cotton by itself. If you have whites, I would also separate them for them. Now, these are professionals. They know what they're doing usually, but Sometimes I've had issues with this, so I just do this as a good practice. Uh, if you're really um, worried, you could make a list for them as well and tell them how you want the garments to be cleaned. 
Will they appreciate it? I don't know. I haven't tried that, but that is something you could do. So once you've separated them, you don't need to fold this up, but I would kind of categorize it. If you have multiple bags, you could also consider uh, separating the bags from, uh, from each other. Before you hand over the clothes, you want to talk to the professionals and you want to confirm, first of all, the price. If you are able to, if you have a price list, you can check that yourself. You want to confirm the time that you hand the clothes over and the time that you get them back. You can burn yourself on this if you are running out of clothes. You could perhaps hand wash a set yourself, but if you're running out of clothes and I spent three days washing your garments and you need clothes tomorrow or you're leaving the next day, that's a huge problem, right? So definitely always confirm this. At the same time, if you have any specific requests, then it's the time to make it, right? Once that is done, it's just a waiting game. You've done your part. After this, you should get all your clothes back nice and neatly folded. If you have special requests, again, for, for example, ironing, you probably have to pay extra if you do, there's the time to make it. So as you can imagine, this is a fantastic way to wash your clothes if you have more money and time and you're okay with having other people take care of your clothes. All right, so the third way that you can wash your clothes when you're out traveling, this is going to be by using a laundromat or like a washing room that you can find available somewhere. Perhaps your host has a washing machine. It's all going to be pretty much the same. You're going to wash the clothes yourself in a machine pretty much, right? So again, there are lots of advantages to this. You take back control of the washing process yourself. Also, costs usually is squeezed way down there. Still need to keep some laundry detergent available or you need to buy it at the destination where you're going to wash the clothes. But it's going to be significantly quicker, especially if you have a big load of laundry, right? It takes some time to hand wash it all. But just tossing it into the machine and you know set and forget can be very easy compared to uh, while doing it yourself by hand. Um, however, there are some disadvantages to using these laundromats. Again, you kind of have to set off a fixed amount of time there. Can't really well, it depends, right? If you're comfortable just leaving clothes there, you could walk around a little bit, but you pretty much have to be back to the washing machine by the time that the laundry is done so that you can move on to the next process. On top of that, depending on where you're staying, perhaps a dryer is not uh, readily available, so you may need to take the clothes back to dry them yourself. Now, in hotter climates, this isn't really a big deal. It's just the same. It take, can take up space if you need to do it. Usually, I would use a dryer if it's available so that you can just get it back to uh, your accommodation and fold them up and you're set, right? In this apartment here, I actually have uh, my own washing machine. So I'm gonna kind of simulate how this process would go if you are at an actual laundromat or perhaps in your uh, building's washroom. The way that we want to go about this is a lot similar to how we would do laundry at home. First of all, we want to separate the garments. Usually I make piles, one pile for whites and one pile for coloreds first of all. From here, when you're out traveling, you have to kind of judge yourself. You could split it into cotton as well as rest, the rest, I would say. If your cotton clothes aren't too dirty, I would just keep it all in one colored pile and one in one white pile. Ideally, you would just eliminate the white pile when you're out traveling since it's a lot more effort to wash the whites compared to the, the colors when you're out traveling. Next up, we need to check the pockets again and check for specific stains. You know, if there is a specific stain on the garments, you still need to pre-treat it. Washing machine isn't going to do the job for you generally, you will find. Perhaps you could try tossing on a pre-wash if you don't want to like pre-treat stains at the, the laundromat later. Anyway, once you have separated it all, put your clothes into bags and you bring it to the laundromat washing room wherever. At this point, you probably need to pay for detergent if you don't have it, as well as your use of the machines, right? So usually some are coin operated, some you need an app, some you can talk to a clerk and they will help you. Once you've gotten through that, you are ready to start using the washing machine. I recommend that you use the gentle program when you're washing clothes and traveling, unless there is a specific stain on it. So at this point, you want to load your machine. Obviously you could run two machines at once if you want to run one for whites and one for colors run three if you want to run one for cotton colors, one for delicates colors, and maybe one for whites on its own. It's really up to you how many <laughs> machines you want to keep running. I would try to stay to as few as possible though. Anyway, we close up the machine at this point. Laundry detergent, now is the time to add it. Again, I recommend using sheets like this. It's so easy to bring along with you. If you want to purchase these ones in particular, they also have a travel sized pack. I can link that in the video description if you're interested. The detergent goes in a tray named number two, like that. You can add fabric softener if you're that type of person. I'm not, so I'm not gonna. So from here, we turn on the machine. 
and we switch it over to the delicates cycle. Press start, like that, and then the waiting game begins. There is optional step pair of running a dryer program after you're done washing them, or you can bring them back and dry them yourself in your accommodation. Really up to you, right? I gave a lot of drying tips here earlier in the video that you can check out. Anyway, for folding the clothes or like packing them for travel, I've made videos on that in the past. I'm gonna link that up here if you want to see that. Uh, how to fold clothes for travel. I usually make rolls so they don't wrinkle up and they save more space. Also, if you want a little cheat sheet on how you can fold your clothes together that you can download on your phone, you can get that at organizing.tv slash free, actually. <laughs> All right, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.